Well, good evening, everybody, and I'm back to play another concert for you. I need to preface this evening's performance by saying that it may or may not work. We are having a big snowstorm here in Durango, and this time I actually received a message from my internet provider saying that service may go out. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to give it a good try anyhow. Tonight's concert is going to be ragtime by request. And so uh, go ahead and send in lots of requests. I have some that I've gotten ahead of time that I've already written down. In fact, I'm going to start with one of these, which is an early cakewalk from 1897, written by Cary Mills, a wonderful composer who's a little underrated. He wrote Meet Me in St. Louis and Red Wing. This is called At a Georgia Camp Meet. Georgia camp meeting. Thank you, folks. Well, it looks like everything's working pretty well. We'll see what happens tonight. I think this is the first time in two years of doing virtual concerts that I've actually received a message from my internet provider saying the internet might go out. But uh, that means it'll probably work perfectly tonight, I'm sure. And uh, hopefully we will not have what happened during my Christmas concert. Well, next up, another early rag. I like to start with some of the early ones and then kind of go chronologically through the history of the music. And I had multiple requests for Scott Joplin, no surprise there. Uh, this one goes out to Sue Needle in Baltimore. And it's, uh, in fact, it's the first piece that Joplin wrote after the Maple Leaf Rag in 1900 with his piano student, Arthur Marshall, the Swipesy Cakewalk. <laughs>
Swipesy Cakewalk. Thank you so much. Well, I'm checking on YouTube now for requests and to see who's listening. I hope Sue got to hear that. That's, that's problematic if I play the piece and the person's not listening in the concert yet. We'll see. And of course, I will not be able to get to all the requests, even if I know them. Uh, there's just not enough time in two hours. I don't know Fizzwater by heart. Maybe I'll do Charleston Rag here in a, here in a minute. Um, I did get a request for Calico Rag as well. I thought I would play that for you next. It's, it's a really fun one. I used this in the Old Time Piano Championship once. Calico Rag, written in 1914 by Nat Johnson. from Sharon all the way in Australia. Glad you got to hear that. Usually about uh, three tunes in, something like that, I make an announcement that I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. All you have to do is send in a tip on PayPal or Venmo uh, like you would do in person. And if you don't trust PayPal, I have a P.O. box on my website for checks. Uh, this, this live stream business has really helped my career and uh, in fact, uh, this time of year, I'm, I'm kind of relying on it. This is, uh, the winter season is usually the slowest for musicians. I don't think I've said Happy New Year yet tonight. 
Well, I'm afraid I'm getting a lot of requests I don't know. You know, I know people will be disappointed. Uh, it's, it's, uh, please don't think I'm ever ignoring anyone. It's just a matter of whether I know the song by heart or not, uh, or a piece of music, uh, you know. And, um, let's see. Oh boy, I'm getting some tough requests, too. Uh, don't know at all. It, you know, p people think of me as a ragtime piano expert, but that certainly doesn't mean I know all the more obscure ragtime pieces that I can just sit down and play them. That's not quite how it works. Um, I got a request for Charleston Rag a bit, a bit uh, further back there, so let me go ahead and do that. That's a little bit of UB Blake for you. He claimed that he wrote it when he was 16 years old. Uh, UB was not as old as he claimed to be. So exactly what it was written, I don't know. The first piano roll of the piece came out in 1917. And uh, originally it was called Sounds of Africa, and then he changed the title to The Charleston Rag. UB Blake. folks. No, I've never played Graceful Ghost. <sighs> Boy, so many requests coming in so fast. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get to them all. Weary Blues, that would be kind of interesting. Maybe I'll do that next. This is for Joe Plains on YouTube. Uh, Weary Blues. Uh, this was written by Artie Matthews, who was one of the uh, classic ragtime fraternity, you might say, in St. Louis. 
This is the one blues tune he wrote. Of course, in the early days, blues and ragtime were very similar. And it features the very first notated walking bass line, later known as Boogie Woogie. So listen for that. It's called the Weary Blues. Someone's just commented here, uh, it's kind of interesting, it sure sounds peppy for something called the weary blues. Well, that's true. Like I say, in the early days, blues were more like ragtime. They were played up-tempo for dancing. And I play that even faster than I imagine the composer would because that tune became a standard of uh, jazz bands in the 20s, Dixieland-style jazz bands. A lot of them play the weary blues. Now... I want to do uh, something that's more like a popular song instead of a rag or blues. And uh, I named the concert Ragtime by Request, which is taken from one of the old Johnny Maddox uh, LPs, Dot Records from, uh, this one's from the 1960s. I just thought it's a good name for the concert. And so I'm going to do one of the tunes that he recorded on Ragtime by Request. Uh, this dates from about 1919, and it was named for a famous silent movie star of the period. The Vamp.
Thank you, thank you. The vamp. That's kind of an unusual tune because it ends with the verse instead of the chorus of the song. Uh, I haven't looked at the music in years. I don't remember if that's uh, the way it's uh, written, but that's the way everybody plays it. So that's, that's the vamp. Now, I got a request uh, earlier on Facebook, I think it was. Let me check Facebook. Hmm. Well, I don't know how to... I don't know how to fix that. I'm just going to keep playing since it seems to be working very well on, uh, on YouTube. And then people can go back and watch the concert on YouTube later. It's much easier to find my previous concerts if you just look at my YouTube channel. They're all archived there. All the concerts that I, I'm happy with, I leave them up for posterity on YouTube. So that was the springtime rag. Hopefully you heard most of it. I, let's see. I also got a request for this piece, and I have the original edition of it from 1917, but I couldn't find it. It's in my sheet music room somewhere, filed under some letter, and I can't remember exactly where. It was written in 1917. It's called the Johnson Rag, and it was revived in the 1940s by a lot of the big bands and became a big hit. Here's the 1940s printing of it with the band leader Larry Clinton on the cover. And uh, I love this tune. My grandmother could remember this from when she was... Uh, young in the 1940s, and uh, this came from Canada, Australia. So this is a request from him, the Johnson Rag. says Facebook is back. Man, that'd be great if that was the case. Let me double check real quick. Maybe it fixed itself. Just one moment, folks.
Now, I don't think Facebook is back. You know what happens often is that people will watch a previous concert on Facebook and they think it's live. In fact, one of my friends here in Durango accidentally watched last year's Christmas concert. And I told him I had all these streaming issues. He said, no, it seemed fine to me. It was last year's concert. <laughs> I didn't wear a red shirt this year. That's how I figured it out. Well, let me do another uh, piece off of the Johnny Maddox album, Ragtime by Request. If uh, Marilyn Schoon and Bill Wortley are listening, I know they like this. I know Carl and Amy in Seattle like this as well. I hope you uh, all have managed to move over to YouTube. And anyway, uh, this was written by the ragtime composer Joe Jordan. It was a favorite of mine, and he wrote that Tease and Rag, which was a big hit in 1909. And in 1910, he wrote Levy Joe, which is the song that made Fanny Bryce famous. This is a piece that he wrote. A song, it it's a song. It has words to it. And, but it was never published, and it's just gorgeous. The Corsica Rag by Joe Jordan, and I don't know the verse to the tune, so what I do is what Johnny used to do. He threw in another tune from about the same period, 1913 or 14, called At the Ball, That's All. I'll play that in the middle of Corsica. Thank you very much. Corsica, that French rag by Joe Jordan, 
with At The Ball That's All. You might recognize that tune from the famous Laurel and Hardy movie, Way Out West. Uh, it's very familiar, that's where they do the, that funny dance. It's one of the best things Laurel and Hardy ever did, and they made a lot of great movies. Good, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're on here. Okay, good. I, I heard from Marilyn and uh, Carl as well. It looks like everybody's found that uh, YouTube's working fine. 103 watching on, on YouTube and five on Twitch. Hey, it's great. You know? Ooh, got some tough requests here on uh, on Twitch as well. Hmm. Oh, I've got a lot of requests here. Got two for the Yellow Dog Blues, so maybe I should play that next. Uh, I do know the Ragtime Dance by heart as well. Let me do the Yellow Dog Blues next. Uh, this was written by W.C. Handy, and since I was just talking about Johnny, that's, that's appropriate. So I learned this uh, so in his style. When I say I learned things from him, I really didn't learn them directly from him. I just borrowed some of his arrangements. Uh, my saying is I only steal from the best. I've, I've borrowed many arrangements from other great pianists, the ones that I think are just terrific. And in the early days, the blues, again, were played a little more up-tempo. It's called the Yellow Dog Blues. It was named after the Yazoo Delta Railroad in Mississippi. And uh, the slang term for it was the Yellow Dog Line. The Yellow Dog Blues.
Dog Blues. Thank you, folks. Leo, you're welcome to steal anything from me you want. I only steal from the best. That's the way to do it, yeah. Well, uh, a lot of people mess around with Yellow Dog Blues. They don't play it in the right key or they play it too slow or what have you. It's written in the key of D major, which is kind of unusual for almost any kind of popular music. Popular piano music is all in the flat keys. Um, the sharp keys are more common with stringed instruments. Oh, you know, I, I was playing at the Diamond Bell last night, and I did, I did learn Auld Lang Syne. Maybe I'll play that for you at the end of the concert tonight. I'd, uh, let's see. There was a rag I was going to play. Oh, I've got multiple requests for Junk Man rags, so let me try and play that for you uh, before we leave the realm of ragtime and get into jazz and so forth a little bit. Um, written by Lucky Roberts, one of my very favorites of all the ragtimers, 1913, early on. Junk Man Rag. <laughs> Junk Man Rag. 
Thank you. That's pretty much the way that Lucky Roberts himself played it. The published sheet music, or two versions, I think, it was in C major. Of course, Lucky played it in D flat. A little bit more challenging to play, and it sounds better, too. Every key on the piano has a little bit different tone to it, different, a different sound. Well, what's next, everybody? I'll even check here on Twitch. Are there any requests? <laughs> I see my friend Kylan was watching here on Twitch, and it says he says LOL what? I agree. Rooster Rag, man, I might be able to play that. No, Heliotrope Bouquet is key of G, Akimi. Uh, you know, uh, I saw a comment that you wrote just a minute ago. Um, you're absolutely right. I guess, I guess it's a very good thing that I'm streaming on three websites, because if one goes down, well, then uh, there's still an option. The funny thing is it's never happened quite this way before, where one goes out and the others are fine. Let me try and play the rooster rag for you. This has been a favorite of mine for years. And I finally learned it by heart. Uh, written by a woman named Mur Muriel Pollock. It was one of the most talented ragtime and novelty artists in the 1920s. Um, for, but she wrote this when she was very young. In fact, she might have been a teenager. It came out about 1916 or 17. The Rooster Rag. idea. Uh, I was going to play this tune. This is for Luke Johnson there. Uh, Casey Jones, he requested. And uh, I love to play train songs and throw a few of those in once in a while. In fact, this is one of the earliest. It dates to 1909. That's when the song came out. And it was published in Los Angeles, which is kind of unusual because at that time, the entertainment business, the music business, Tin Pan Alley, it was still in New York. It didn't move out to Hollywood and 
really until about uh, 1930 when the Depression hit. And so, uh, of course, Case Jones is based on the story of a real engineer who stayed at the throttle of the train and saved uh, all the other passengers. And it happened in Mississippi uh, in 1900. Uh, but here's, here's the famous tune, Casey Jones, the Brave Engineer. engineer. Thank you, folks. Well, since the streaming seems to be working well enough, and I have about a hundred people watching here on YouTube, uh, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts if you're just joining us. Uh, I hope I'm getting some new listeners every week, and it's, it's very helpful to my career. You just send in a, a small tip on PayPal or Venmo, and, uh, you know, it's just, just like I'm playing for you in person. There's, at least I try and make it as much that way as possible. Well, I, I'd like to move into some different kinds of music here. I don't want to just play rags all night. Uh, you know, I do play a lot of other things. In fact, let me do another tune off the Johnny Maddox album. This is from the early 1930s, and this is a, a one that I love. Uh, I played this for Rose Marie, who was on the Dick Van Dyke show. I got to meet her twice, went to her house, and played the piano for. Um, and the reason I played this is because it's one of the songs she sang in a Vitaphone film short in the early 1930s. It's called Sentimental Gentleman from Georgia. <laughs>
sentimental gentleman from Georgia. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, I'm just reading comments here, folks. Well, what else would we like? Send in some requests. Let me check Twitch just in case. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to do the Tom Breyer at the end of the concert. I usually get multiple requests for his, his music. It shows you how popular it is. Isn't that interesting? Um, I'd like to play a slow tune if nobody minds. <laughs> Deep Henderson, maybe I'll do that. Probably got time. Let me go ahead and do this tune for you. I've got another one sitting out on the piano. Once again, it was on the album called Ragtime by Request, which really a lot of it is uh, 1920s and 30s pop songs, not ragtime at all. This one is also from the early 1930s. This copy has Gene and Glenn on the cover. What is Darkness on the Delta? Love this tune. Never played the verse, but I'm going to give it a shot. so much when it's darkness on the Delta. Oh, I got, I got a request for Duke Ellington here. I might play some of his pieces. I don't know if you all can hear the rain tonight. It's just warm enough that I, it hasn't turned to snow yet. <laughs> and the trains, it's a little bit of background noise. I can't, I can't help it. Uh, Let me play a different Duke Ellington piece for you. I'm going to do one that uh, is from the mid-30s, 1935, I believe. I think it's just a gorgeous song. I'm in the mood to play a ballad. Uh, it's called Sophisticated Lady. And with it, as a medley, 
Uh, another tune by Duke Ellington called In a Sentimental Mood. Most of that looked like there was a slight glitch. Well, I haven't been outside yet. It could be snowing here in Durango. It sounds like rain on the roof, but... Uh... Okay, now... Got a request for... This, this came ahead of time. 
uh, before the concert, and I think I'll do it now. It's, it's a hot piano piece, kind of a stride piano style, uh, which was recorded in 1929 by Alex Hill, who was a black songwriter of the period, and uh, I want to do an up-tempo number, because then I'm going to do a slow one after that. This, you'll love this. It's called Stompin' Them Down. Maybe two more requests here for the night's folks. Uh, I have one that I'm planning to end with that uh, the request came in ahead of time, of course. Steamboat Rag. Never heard of that one, I'm afraid. Oh, I, I have a modern turntable, you know, and do digital record transfers to my laptop. Uh, all you need is a uh, turntable and preamp and so, so forth. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I'm saving the Tom Breyer for the end, so ask me for a few others here, folks. Let me check Twitch. Well, I see some requests. Aha! Well, guess what? It looks like I'm going to play one of those. <laughs> no, Weeping Willow, I've got about five requests for that tonight, and I'm afraid I don't know it. I do know Moonlight Serenade. That's from, from Loretta. I was planning to play that, so let me go ahead and... Moonlight Serenade, Glenn Miller, uh, from about the same time period, 1939. Getting, getting a little more uh, hip here with this newer music. <laughs> Thank you. 
Midnight Serenade. Thank you, folks. I, I love that. I think that's the most gorgeous tune. I don't think I'd ever heard anyone play it on the piano. I think it was a piano solo until I ran across a video of Peter Minton playing that tune. That's where I got the arrangement. Uh, Peter is one of the very finest 1920s and 30s style pianists. He plays beautiful arrangements with a beautiful touch. Um, very uh, rom His style is quite romantic sometimes. I love it. Now, I'd like at least maybe one more sort of ragtime style tune here before I uh, quit for the night. And I promise I'm going to do the Tom Breyer rags for you. I uh, have already been planning some of the concerts I'm going to do over the next few weeks. I, I was on vacation to Florida uh, briefly for about a week. And on the trip home, I spent some time just kind of bored on the airplane, writing down what I'm going to do for the next few months. January and February are the slower months for me as a musician. And so uh, I, I do take these virtual concerts seriously. In the next few weeks, I'm planning to do my Gershwin tribute again. It's been almost a year since I did that. I'm planning to do uh, uh, possibly a Disney music themed concert uh, if I can come up with enough, enough songs, I think I can, and if copyright censors don't take it down. Uh, with those songs, I'd be more concerned than any of the usual ones that I play. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And then another great idea struck me. Those of you who know me might be surprised, but... Uh, and the idea, once again, came from a Johnny Maddox album. He did one called Raggin' the Hits, which was all pop hits of the 1960s which is when the record was made. He, he did them in a ragtime style, songs like Java and Alley Cat and um, Washington Square. And, and uh, I might try and do a sort of a modern music themed concert. I, I even do one Beatles song. I won't even tell you what it is. You have to wait for the concert, but all those things are in the works. You know, the Darktown Strutter's Ball sounds kind of fun. Maybe I'll play that. Uh, let, let, me, let me do that. I want to do something kind of up-tempo. Strutter's Ball, written way back in 1917 by Shelton Brooks. Oh, that's good. Uh, I'm reading, really, yeah, people think I can do the Disney and get away with it. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, now, for the, for the grand finale of tonight's concert, I'm going to play a Tom Breyer tune. 
This is for my new friend Max that I've met at the West Coast Ragtime Festival. He requested one of the Briar tunes, and we decided on Balderdash, one of Tom's great rags, only written about 15 years ago. There's people still writing very good ragtime today, and this is one of my favorites of all of his tunes. It's kind of like a, almost like a 1920s foxtrot. Balderdash. <laughs> Folks, that's Balderdash. I think that's about enough for tonight. Thank you so much for listening. I'm sorry the Facebook stream died. I have no idea why. But I'm going to be back tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm tired tonight. Uh, next week with another virtual concert. Sunday night, same time, same place. And I, I think I've decided on my theme for next week as well. I'm going to challenge myself. Uh, the concert is going to be called New Year, New Songs. And um, the idea is to do a lot of songs that I've never performed before, either new ones that I can learn in the next week or ones that I don't think I've played in a long time. So it's going to be a challenge, both rags and popular songs, new songs, new year, next weekend on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And th thanks also for the virtual tips, folks. Good night for now. <laughs>